MSW Review, the old school wrestling video podcast. This is not that, but this is your host, Wonder Boy, Wonder Man, Jay Hunter. Joined as ever with the dark Turkish delight, the venerable V1. All right. And Supermoan OC. All right. <laughs> <laughs> It's 2009's Watchmen Film Review, and it's coming up right now. Welcome, Niggers! The And we are done and dusted with the Black Rain story arc. 2007 TNA. Uh, what'd you think? It was amazing. I loved it. I wish we were doing more. Aww. Maybe. Oh, wait. <laughs> That's me tapping the nose. Uh, OZ, what'd you think? I think it was my favourite arc. Of all time? I think so. Like, pound for pound. X-Pac is the best boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think it may be our strongest arc episode to episode. It was great. I thoroughly enjoyed I it. I was great. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've finished the Black Rain story arc. And we're doing one-off reviews until starting a new story arc sometime next year. Oh, see, what was the build to reviewing Watchmen? Well, I was thinking, I was harking back. We were in Neo's Gap. Anyone remember him? No. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my hard drive. <laughs> was Watchmen on the hard drive? No, because he wouldn't let us watch something through a hard drive. He'd have to copy it over to his PC upstairs and use his world-famous magnet broadband to stream it downstairs. And when it started coughing and spluttering, he would refuse. And a, a two-and-a-half-hour movie would take seven hours. <laughs> <laughs> so who was in attendance at this screening of watching? Uh, I knew you were going to bring this up. <laughs> so we had my good self, your good self, your good self, Neo, and uh, another, another, uh, <laughs> another person. <laughs> Who will name? name yeah, I, I don't. I don't think. Uh, you know. Clara. <laughs> <laughs> well, like that means nothing to anyone. <laughs> it's just a name. You know the way you chush people in the you know cinema if they get too loud. What happens if you're watching it in someone's home and there's only a handful of you? You you so lost angry. it. You said, for God's sake, would you be quiet? They're actually talking about the plot. It's amazing how you could be so ignorant. I just, I've read a crossroads if we're going to launch into a tirade about this. <laughs> I'll be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this review is thanks to our lovely bras and bras at Nugger U. Buy the point and enroll at patreon.com forward slash Nugger U. Nope. Uh, Way off. Yeah. Well, no, no. At noggeru.osw.com. Noggeru.osw.com. And Steve, you're on Twitch. I am indeed. And it's great. I play many great horror games. <laughs> 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 I got so much abuse for it saying that. It was hilarious. Uh, yeah, so uh, give me a follow and maybe a sub. Get some awesome uh, emotes at twitch.tv forward slash OSW review. Before we start, let's get you up to speed. United forever, come and meet your friends. Have no fear, time's up, time's here for the Watchmen. Watchmen, the famous 1986-87 Alan Moore graphic novel, along with Frank Miller's Batman Year One. It was marketed as a graphic novel, associating it with books and differentiating it from comics. Hugely praised critically and commercially for its contemporary, sophisticated adult storytelling and Dave Gibbons' art style, it was the only graphic novel to appear in Time 2005 Top 100 Greatest Novels. Oh, wow. It was only a matter of time before it was adapted onto the big screen. A film adaptation had been in development hell since the 1980s when Moore sold the rights to make it. 
Fox and Warner Brothers abandoned it, Terry Gilliam calling it unfilmable. Universal and Paramount cancelled it due to the massive budget needed, but it wasn't until 2005 with Warner Brothers and Paramount eventually hiring director Zack Snyder and getting the project off the ground. <sighs> Mr. Moore, will you sign my DVD of Watchmen Babies? Which of the babies is your favourite? Steve, Alan Moore, The Killing Joke. Another whopper fucking comic. Also, From Hell, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Swamp Thing, which is fucking amazing, and V for Vendetta. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's a talented lad, isn't he? Holy shit. Zack Snyder, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. I like the movie. 300. Loved it. Yeah. He's a very flashy filmmaker. He he makes great looking movies. He is. He's got a, a certain style. It's not to everyone's taste, and he's no. getting a bad rap these days, actually. Well, that's because I think he hasn't grown, still kind of churning out the same. Lots of, like, CG backgrounds, lots of slow-mo. There was a time and a place for that. Cinema has kind of moved on, but he hasn't. Right, and this one's Watchmen. Man of Steel. Man of Steel gets a lot of shit, but I don't hate that movie. <sighs> it's, it's a tough one to call. It's probably half an hour too long. A little bit slow and boring in parts and a little bit too smash, bash, crash. What, what a, a video. Crash. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. Wallop. What a video. Oh, uh, Superman Dawn of Justice. Really, really, really liked it. And I know I'm in the minority on this. And uh, the upcoming Justice League. And the currently out Justice League. And last year's Justice League. (laughs) (laughs) Delete is appropriate. So, you know, not hugely respected, but, you know, he has a lot of blockbusters under his belt. Watchmen the film. It was released February 23rd, 2009. So superhero movie-wise, that's a year after Nolan's incredible The Dark Knight with Christian Bale and Heath Ledger and before Marvel Avengers Phase 1 had taken shape. It wasn't really anything in 2009, just only Iron Man and Edward Norton's Hulk were out. So two years before Thor and Captain A and the rest. Raking in worldwide how much, this film? That's like 350 million. I would say 300 185 million. Ouch. How much did it cost to make? 130. Ouch. And does that include marketing and advertisement? That was an extra 50 million. So this was a money loss until it came out on Blu-ray, surely. Pretty much. And they had to let Fox Studios wet their beak because, you see, the film was getting bounced around the different studios. Yeah. And it was like, hey, you can make it if you pay us a minute. Oh, my God. So it was, what, R-rated? Yeah. That's the problem. It is. It is. Sadly. A 7.6 rating on IMDb and a 65% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Let's see if the film is the dog's bollocks or the dog's swinging... Bl- Never mind. Wow, I have to say now, uh, I checked up Metacritic. Fan reviews was like an 8 point something and critics was like a 5 point something. So it's like, it, it swings wildly. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Kick off! <laughs> Five term President Nixon warns the Soviets and their nuclear arms to step off. We're in an alternate reality 1985 where Nixon remained president, thanks to the emergence of superheroes in 1938. The biggest change is that USA won the Vietnam War. See, all the flags have 51 stars now because Vietnam is the 51st uh-huh. state. How did they win? Thanks to a fantastical accident, Nixon now has a walking, godlike nuclear deterrent in the form of Dr. Manhattan, a scientist now a super being. His superpowers include seeing into the past and present, altering matter like teleporting people and dismantling tanks into its component pieces before crushing it, but not mastering underpants. <laughs> 
The times, they are a changin'. Explaining the last 40 years of this dystopian alternate reality, we see cool alternate versions of famous events slash photos. So superhero silhouette kisses the girl, not a sailor. The comedian shakes hands with Nixon, not Elvis. Original night owl in an alleyway with Batman posters in the background saves whom we assume is Thomas and Martha Wayne, meaning there's no need for Bruce Wayne to become Batman in this universe. Ooh, oh, I didn't get that. I did not get that. All of these are part of the original 1940s superheroes called the Minutemen, whilst this film follows the second generation of superheroes, the Watchmen. The whole opening credits were amazing. Yeah, I loved it. Like they, this paparazzi were taking photos really close up while the comedian had somebody in a headlock, but the guy was shooting a gun at the yeah. time. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the safest uh, environment for the paparazzo. And the, the song choice was very, very good as well. We'll soon shake your windows and rattle your walls For the times they are changing What happened to the Minutemen? After the Vietnam War, they were no longer needed and were mostly either murdered or sent to an insane asylum. This is the type of world we're in, just rampant intolerance. A superhero killed for being a lesbian, use of faggot as a slur, threats to out you as a commie, and even righteous Rorschach condemning possible homosexuality from one of his mates. Mm. Steve, you read the graphic novel before watching the film. What did you think? Fucking fabulous. Enjoyed every single page. Actually, yeah, what happened to the... Yeah, so what happened to the Minutemen? Mostly bad things. Silhouette was murdered for being gay. Mothman, who I'm pretty sure was taken right from Arthur in The Tick. (laughs) (laughs) He hit the bottle pretty hard, drank himself right into a padded cell. Dollar Bill was stopping a bank robbery. He was chasing the guys and his cape got caught in the door and the baddies shot him and killed him. The original Night Owl, he actually retired safe and sound, wrote a book, which is, you know, how most people know about all the background history. Is that Under the Hood? Uh, yes. Then there was Hooded Justice. He went missing. Uh, no one knows what happened to him. Too many HJs. Too many HJs. There was the, the original Silk Spectre. Miss Jupiter. Uh, she became pregnant and quit and tried to make it in acting and other things. And there was Captain Metropolis, who just got kind of old and fat and quit. Oh, there was the comedian as well, who has gone through the years and is also an actual watchman as well as having been a Minuteman. Uh, Thank you, Stephen. The police are generally non-existent, unhelpful, and shown only to really hamper our heroes. With abundant, unchecked crime, we side with the vigilante superheroes who actually help the city. Despite that, they are generally met with contempt from the public, who want law and order, not masked vigilantes. So Nixon signs in the Keen Act, an anti-mask law forcing the lads to retire. And that's where we are now. Mm. That's very, very like uh, Marvel's Civil War. They were given a choice to either sign up and work for the government or they're... Enemies of the government. Yeah, and then they're on the run then, you know? How is everything, just in general, not great? In response to this incredible power of Dr. Manhattan, Russia has stepped up its arms to turn this Cold War into a nuclear war. They're moving troops, threatening to invade Afghanistan and start launching nukes, which would start a catastrophic World War III. A symbolic clock was made, the Doomsday Clock, midnight representing nuclear war. And then there's a bit later, uh, Nixon says, what assholes say it's nuclear war? I say when it's nuclear war. It's like, yes! It's a genius gimmick for selling newspapers. That's what it is. So it's like five to midnight, four to midnight. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. It's completely arbitrary. It, totally. And Steve, what is the most dangerous time of all? It's not midnight. Quarter past ten. Thank you, Dr. Knox. Um, Bloodborne? In it, there's a pose that your your character gets, and he's just quarter past twelve. People see it and go, "Oh, he's praising the sun," and I'm like, "He's quarter past twelve. Shut up! <laughs> I know." <laughs> there's actually a spoiler alert, Stephen. No, you haven't played Resident Evil, but there is a clock puzzle in Resi Seven. America. <laughs> <laughs> 
good? Is it quarter past ten? Is that is. the answer? The oh answer. yeah. Like I have to try it anyway. It is. Oh my god. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Question. Uh, what's the deal with? What's the deal <laughs> <laughs> with that wetsuit you're wearing? <laughs> you going swimming? Nixon has road dogs rubber nose on. See ya. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Rorschach's journal. That's not bad. That's not it's bad. really good. It's not bad at all. October 12th, 1985. Tonight, a comedian died in New York. Ah, that was, that was really like good. a very Irish Rorschach. <laughs> Rorschach's journal, boy. I'm Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> a comedian died in Boston. <laughs> but he's not Irish, so fuck him. <laughs> Kick off with the event that starts this whole story. The murder of the comedian. Played by Negan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan, a charming mega heel psychopath, is sure is typecast. Also played Batman's dad in Dawn of Justice. Hmm. During his struggle with the mystery assailant at his gaff, his apartment's three thousand and one, and then the cup breaks, and it's three hundred. Uh, yes, we see their superhuman via their impossible strength. Man, it's a brutal beatdown including a head smash breaking a black granite table. Oh, that was my favourite. I actually marked out a bit of that as well. It was really awesome. You can actually see director Zack Schneider huddled beside the drawer in one of the shots. What, like, was that a a gaff? Yeah, yeah, it's a fuck up, but that's the only shot they had and he's like... (laughs) (laughs) Brilliant. (laughs) Fuck (laughs) up. The comedian is thrown through a reinforced window of his penthouse apartment and his smiley face button is soiled by a single splash of blood. Fantastic, iconic symbol in the history of all pop culture. The smiley face, of course, made popular by Forrest Gump, Mankind and some fat bloke at the end of the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Superhuman strength, yes, but I thought the only actual superhuman was Dr. Manhattan. I thought the rest of them were just really well-trained and uh, strong, fast people. In the comic, they're all regular people that are just super fit. Yeah. Apart from Dr. Manhattan. And in this film, they're superheroes. I actually have to point out that casting choices in this movie are unbelievable. They are the ringer for their comic book counterparts. Well fucking done. Yeah. This city's afraid of me. I've seen its true face. The streets are extended gutters. And the gutters are full of blood. The film is structured as such that character backstory is told via intermittent flashbacks and in the present, notable characters are murdered one by one with Rorschach spearheading the detective work to unravel the mystery. Rorschach? Yes. Because of the psychotherapy ink blots on his white cloth mask. It's so cool. It's really awesome. Uh, Side note, this test is much more common in the US than Europe and it's usually uh, used on kids but that's just to get them to talk about themselves and see what's going on in their head, rather than a serious test. Rorschach's played by Jackie Earl Haley, the only main actor to know of Watchmen beforehand and campaigned for the role. Mm. Uh, I thought he did an amazing job. I don't think you could have cast a better person to play him. He's the fucking ringer for him. And he would go on to do the new Nightmare or Nightmare on Elm Street remake or whatever. Yeah, sorry, mate. That was it terrible film you know the way the whole gimmick of nightmare on elm street is you don't know whether you're in the real world or the sleep world yeah so freddy could come at you whatever but in this film they actually have a fucking green yellow light saying haha it's the fake world yeah obviously <laughs> you put on the damn light you know <laughs> and the voice that he did hurt his throat real bad but oh, he sure did yeah yeah but oh, it's so cool. I, way better than Christian Bale's Batman voice. Much better. Oh, it that was just put on and sounded ridiculous. This sounded legit. And when the drains finally scab over, all the vermin will drown. Despite that, I don't think I could be friends with him. He's a pessimistic sociopath, obsessed with dealing with the absolute worst of humanity. Always banging on about this cesspool of a city and it's heroin and it's child pornography. It's like, oh, mate, you got to yeah. turn it off sometimes. Take a day off. Yeah. <laughs> He's like a broken Batman. Um, in the comic book, it's told that the cloth is made from a dress meant for Kitty Genovese, mm. 
who was real life murdered in public. Her death sparked outcry about bystander apathy. Uh, very cool, very fitting for his character as well. Uh, we get to meet the rest of the crew, unlike Marvel's The Avengers, where despite some minor differing ideologies, they're all basically good guys, you know, Watchmen run a wide gamut and are loosely superheroes. They're not heroes, but they are super people. <laughs> some of them are the absolute opposite of heroes. They're so self-centered and they're not there to help people at all. Rorschach tracks down people of interest to tell them the news or try to extract it. First up, we got Dan, a.k.a. Night Owl, a.k.a. Man, Man Bat. Bat. <laughs> who, when we started calling him Man Bat uh, when we watched his movie first, we didn't know there was a character in Batman who was an actual man-sized bat called Man Bat. Or a bat-sized man. <laughs> <laughs> bat-sized man. <laughs> help me, help me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's Patrick Wilson ah, from Insidious. Yeah, and... Hard Candy and Conjuring. Oh, Hard and, Candy. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, yeah, I like him a lot. And he actually put on some weight for this role, so he looks like a kind of washed-up superhero. Yeah, yeah, with Perfect. his little punch. And, mm. yeah. First up is Man Bat, who is happy to have his superhero days behind them and dismisses the murder as a trend. His character is a limp dick. <laughs> I got a lame dick, 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 dick. dick, dick. dick. <laughs> yeah, he's the real Minute Man. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. He fucking wishes. He could... <laughs> you have to get going to last a minute. <laughs> uh, he plays the insecure, neurotic, quiet, submissive man, despite being able to kick everyone's ass in a cool costume with high tech, expensive gadgets. His costume is kind of cool. I do like it. Ah, uh, the glasses are a bit. Yeah, Hagen, you know there. <laughs> <laughs> then to see Dr. Manhattan and girlfriend Laurie slash Silk Spectre, who also brush him off. As we've seen, Billy Crudup, John, a.k.a. Dr. Manhattan, an enlightened but pretty emotionless bald blue Kevin Spacey. <laughs> Laurie, a.k.a. Silk Spectre, played by Malin Ackerman. Pretty much regular girl who happens to kick ass. She's the daughter of the original Silk Spectre, a.k.a. Miss Jupiter. Laurie is, to be kind to her, a bit of a ditz. I don't even think she's a ditz. I just think she's a bit of a bitch. She's also not a very good actress. No, She's quite not. wooden. She was in um, Couples Retreat or something like that as well. Jesus. You know, like Vince Vaughn and somebody else. She hasn't done a lot. Manhattan is a giant here and he shrinks and turns but the shot cuts so we, you know he doesn't we don't turn into the dick basically <laughs> uh, initially Zack Snyder was saying he was already facing the camera and then shrank down and then he said oh well his penis just shrank on camera and it was distracting it was like oh was it now <laughs> Adrian Veidt aka Ozymandias Matthew Good, uh, the most financially successful of the ex-Watchmen, unmasked, started an energy company and has amassed billions with a B. His goal is to rid the world's need of fossil fuels and provide the world with renewable energy. That's very kind. Hmm? There was a great touch during the scene where Ozzy is talking to the kind of suits, you know, about his toys and stuff. Uh, in the background, the song playing is Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Hmm. Adrian is next for Rorschach to track down. Possible homo. Must investigate further. No homo. <laughs> yes homo. <laughs> no homo is like the best thing, isn't it? No I like homo. the phrase no homo. I think yeah. it's funny. No homo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, forgot the comment <laughs> and the exclamation mark at the end. It's hinted at that Ozzy's a homosexual. At the start of the film, he's shown outside Studio 54 with the village people in the background. Oh. And they're all like, bang, bang. They're all finger banging. They cry bang, like. bang, bang. <laughs> Adding to this, he feels a kinship to Alexander the Great, who was by. And also, if you actually freeze frame it when they're looking at his floppy disk, he has a folder on it labeled Boys. <laughs> Oh my god. Yeah, but that was just like Virgil, <laughs> Polly. <laughs> Marty Jeanette. He's clearly a wrestling fan. Yeah. <laughs> Hercules. At the comedian's funeral, we get a flashback to see what a great guy he was. <laughs> Top face. 
After a Minutemen photo shoot, he flirts with Miss Jupiter and comes in while she's changing. She verbally and physically says no, tells him to fuck off, and slaps him, pushing him away. She also spells no. You know, yeah. this is very clear. Yeah. <laughs> but instead, he batters her and tries to rape her, cracking her head off a pool table and spreading her legs apart. And that's it. The movie stopped dead in its tracks. I don't care about the murderer or who done it, unless you want to shake his hand. He's a woman-beating rapist. And although Hood of Justice comes in and stops it, if you want to continue caving his face in and kill him, all right, yeah, yeah okay. That's the character, though. Nobody had professed him to be a, a nice guy. He is part of the Watchmen, you know. Yeah, but still, his entire career, he's been awful. Yeah. He also shoots a pregnant woman dead and blames it on Dr. Manhattan for not stopping it. For not turning the gun into steam, it's your fault I shot this woman. He also burns alive defenseless enemy soldiers, which is probably lower down on the list of terrible things. Well, yeah, you know, because about 10 or 15 minutes earlier, they showed John, who was about 600 feet tall, just making people burst with his mind. I think when they're running away, you shouldn't be bursting them, you know? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) For bleeding (laughs) bursting. But why why did they need an army? Why didn't... I think co-branding, Steve. Yeah? It's the US army coming to get you, not just blue balls. Yeah, but put a hat on him, like, you know... Mm. Uh, John's probably like, I will wear... One piece of clothing. <laughs> Choose wisely. <laughs> Fade down and fade back up the film turned into a cartoon not for me Aha. gather round and i shall tell you of tales of the black freighter oh okay awesome it's a comic book within the watchman universe and you can see pages of it in the background of comic panels by and by the regular theatrical version oh see you watch that 225 yeah, yeah. And V1, you watched the... I watched the director's cut, which is 306. Uh-huh. Oh, Jesus. And Jay Hunter watched the ultimate edition, which includes the Tales from the Black Freighter, and is a whopping 3 hours 35. Thanks. Thanks for not making me watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Literally an hour is different. Jesus. After the first jolt of animation coming out of nowhere, it's grand. And about as well integrated as you're going to get, changing from film to animation. Bernard, a kid dressed like Marty McFly, is outside a newsstand. He's kind of reading a comic and they'll kind of go over the shoulder and kind of zoom into the comic panel. And it'll start like that. And that happen- cool. happens five times throughout the film. Um, so do you want to hear about it? Yes, yeah, uh, this, these are some of my favourite scenes from the comic book. It's grim. Before you kick off, can I just say that in this world... Uh, superhero comics died out in the 40s because people weren't buying them because they didn't need to get their superhero fix from comics because they had real world superheroes. So therefore, pirates and cowboys and soldiers was that. Oh, cool. When I awoke, I found myself upon a dismal beachhead with my men. Pieces of my men. A captain is shipwrecked on an island who fashions a raft out of wood, rope and bodies of his deceased crew who are starting to bloat. We can hear his thoughts via the voiceover by Jared Butler of Zack Snyder's 300 fame. He was actually promised a part in the movie, but he didn't get cast, so here, why don't you do this? Thankfully, he's fucking terrible. Yes. Anyway, Captain Butler must return home to Johnstown before the Black Freighter does, an evil ship filled with demon-like bodies intent on murdering and pillaging his town. With no supplies, he drinks seawater, saying you could survive drinking less than a litre a day, which is completely false. Kidneys only make urine out of water less salty than seawater, so it'd just use 
excess water to dilute that so you get doubly dehydrated. Doubly dehydrated, yeah. So he's drinking it. Uh, so as the story goes on, you kind of think he might be hallucinating. Shark attack! <laughs> Shark attack! <laughs> Not John Tenta. <laughs> Give me a shell, gun. <laughs> Sharks come to eat the bodies and him, but he manages to spear one of them to death and use that as buoyancy with his now kind of broken raft. He gives up and falls into the water, only to have landed at Johnstown. Covertly slaying who he assumes traitors and an assassin in his house, he sees that he's actually just murdered his healthy wife in front of his children. He makes a run for it, back to shore, and sees the black freighter laying idle, and swims out to willingly join their crew. The end. I was a horror. Amongst horrors must I dwell. I thought it was well written, very dark, morbid, but very interesting. But it has nothing to do with Watchmen, so it's completely superfluous. But by a few segments in, I was interested to see it through. Mm. So it's not adding to the story, just adding to the runtime. Like, Samurai Cop 2 had hallucinations with... Um, oh, your man with the TV shows. Yeah, and like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that was part of the story that he's being drugged. So, hey, Gregory Hatnack has got the film beat. <laughs> um, also, it reminds me in The Darkness, uh, where you can literally sit down and watch To Kill a Mockingbird on the TV in your apartment. The whole thing. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome, by the way. But that's just a cool thing to do. It's not part of the story. And then I sat down for 90 minutes. Yeah, it's pretty much. Man, that's very, very similar to everything that's in the comic book. Watchmen has like 12 chapters. It probably shows up in at least eight or nine of them. Does the Black Freighter show up in New York? No, 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 but like this, this this kid is reading a comic, you know, like the plight of the pirate guy, it's meant to, you know, go side by side with Ozzy's, he, you know, he's so one track in his plot that he can't see the damage he's doing to himself. He's driving himself crazy, basically. It's just filler, is what it sounds like to me. Yeah, it's it's good, but it's filler. good. If it was the worst part of it, I'd be like, oh. Ugh. It's like reading a Jericho book when he talks about fuzzy. <laughs> <laughs> During the scene where Laurie meets with her mom, so they literally take what the characters say in the comic and have it word for word in the movie. But one of the great things about movies is that you don't need to have it so wordy. Like, you don't need to say what you're seeing. It just comes across shite. Change it a bit. Cut things out to make it work better for a movie. Just have it a bit snappier, you know? Remember that guy that writes me letters? He sent me an item of memorabilia. It's a Tijuana Bible. It's a little eight-page porno comic they did in the 30s and 40s. Yeah, there's a couple of lines I noticed that I was thinking, well, this sounds like a dodgy comic book line. Mm. <laughs> you know, there was one, uh, Night Owl says, it, what happened to us? What happened to the American dream? That's well dodgy, like. Yeah. And there was another one. Oh, yeah, Rorschach's mother in a flashback. I should have got that abortion. No beef <laughs> 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 Wish you died in the womb. <laughs> the triggering system has now been activated. We see Manhattan making love to Laurie, using multiples of himself whilst he's still at work, and doesn't see what the problem is. She's getting satisfied. Why would Laurie be interested in someone so emotionally cold and uninterested? But she actually says he used to be very different. So, okay. Since it's post-coitus, I'll allow it and make sense that he's wang out. But there's no reason for Zack Snyder to pan out. <laughs> Pan out with your wang out. Like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we just get this out of the way now so that we don't yeah. dance around the dick for the rest of the <laughs> review, right? In my version of it, there may have been one second of penis in the entire movie. Uh, oh, it was you? edited out. No. He's wearing pants in scenes. I'm pretty sure he wasn't when we watched it. 
be like you may get like a glimpse uh, every now and again, which is oh, it's so great because it dominates the screen whenever it's <laughs> on. You know, <laughs> well, like you're looking for it. You know, I I fucking was. Yeah, you, you know, you're just like, all right, come on, yeah, there it is. Let's right? just get yeah. it over and done with. <laughs> slap it across the face, <laughs> and then we'll move on. Give <laughs> give me a Joe tattoo on the face, there, John. <laughs> it's like looking into the sun. <laughs> It'll damage your retinas, but you can't look away. Uh, Question: When he goes to Mars, does he have pants on? No, but you don't see his dick. You you see his arse. Yeah, in the theatrical version. I'm pretty sure it was there. When he teleports into the Fortress of Solitude, is it a big? No. Because I just got smacked in the face <laughs> with it. Holy shit. Zoom right in. You can't miss it. Like, because he just teleports in and it's all clackety clack. Like. <laughs> Clickety clack. Don't talk back. It's horrific. This There's no creative decision for this. No. Because in the comic, I think there's three panels in the entire 12 issues and you get to see a little bit of dick but it's like normal regular size dick it's not huge and it's not swinging there are not lines to, to, <laughs> like, <laughs> to like show movement or <laughs> smells stink lines stink lines <laughs> you look closely at the panel would it just say click <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the ultimate version had a, had an ultimate penis in it. Oh my god. <laughs> 20% more penis. <laughs> it's been Jay's kryptonite for a long time. When we watched that film, I had to hold my hand yeah. off whenever he comes on screen. Yeah, but you were hiding everything except the penis. <laughs> <laughs> With the outsiders, yeah. Cover everything except for his penis and his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Did uh, Snyder come out and say anything about the penis other than what you just said? Of course, this was a very divisive subject. I don't know who'd be pro-penis. Hold on a sec. Divisive? (laughs) Like 99.99 to (laughs) 1? Because surely there are no women here. There are no no women women here. (laughs) Show me the man with the swingy dingy. (laughs) (laughs) This is a famous sequence for its CG penises. Not a lot, not a lot of movies have that many CG penises in the same shot. So uh, that was excellent work by everyone. Ooh, then Rorschach goes to see the comedian's arch nemesis, the rather house elf looking Moloch. And he just recounts that the comedian actually burst in one time off his tits, blubbing about something and then went away. Mm. When an assassin tries and fails to kill Adrian, it leads Rorschach back to Moloch. Who's already dead? And shit, Rorschach's been set up. He tries the Trinity Matrix 1 out of it, but is caught, demasked, and sent to prison. My fish! Give me back my fish! Uh, So what happens next? So, yeah, he has an interview. Oh, can you say Dr. So, Dr. Manhattan has an interview. (laughs) Dr. Mutton. Dr. (laughs) Dr. Manhattan has an interview on TV. Gets dressed up in his nice suit. Which is which he is cut nice. the crotch out. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been. I mean, ruins the movie, but you'd mark out. If you know, he's saying, "Oh, you're too bright for TV," and he turns off the brightness, but then you just see a little bit of brightness from his crotch. <laughs> uh, or as he gets darker, his dick gets brighter. <laughs> <laughs> he has to put it somewhere. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah. he's on stage. He's being questioned. Um, much like a, a David Frost kind of character, questioning about people who have been close to him over the years, have started developing cancer, and his ex-wife walks in. She looks okay, takes off her wig. It turns out she has cancer. He gets annoyed because people keep you know around him, flash bulbs and, and and all sorts. And then he says, "Please go away." And then poof, he's gone to Mars. So then we get the backstory, which is my personal favorite part of the movie. Because I think a lot of it's to do with the music. I think it's an amazing piece yeah, of music. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. It's yeah. really good. I've yeah. used it twice in OSW. Really? Yeah, for the passage of time. One of them is when uh, they put the ring together. And the other one was Orton Cena 25 times or whatever. <laughs>
what I like about it is it's Dr. Manhattan, but not doing a bullshitty monologue thing that he does in other parts of the movie. And Rorschach is guilty of it as well. In this, he's basically just telling the story in a very matter of fact way. But I like that the actors are, are doing the emotional bit. Did you see the bump that the janitor takes after he disappears? <laughs> it's hilarious. The, the, the bones and the muscles show up and he bangs against the wall and goes, Rah! and then disappears. And your man in the background goes, Rah! <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so Dr. Manhattan, he's fucked off to Mars. What about his girlfriend, Laurie? She's staying at dance and is mucking about with Archie, their old owl-shaped ship. What's wrong with ya? She bitches about Manhattan, saying John sees a lot of things, but he can't see me. (laughs) (laughs) Which would have got her over if she said it like that. Just about her character, there's one thing that really annoyed... Well, there's many things, but one of them is that she complains that about not having a private life. It's like, shit, wear a goddamn mask like everyone else. Yeah. And then I was thinking, like, other female superheroes, superheroines, they don't wear masks like Storm or, like... Wonder Woman. Yeah, or Black Widow. Obviously, some do, but jeez, it's, it's very much fan service. Yeah. yeah. Go around fighting crime in garters and stilettos. She puts the moves on Dan, and they start to bang. And there's a bit of... (laughs) I've been really trying, baby. (laughs) But, ah, jeez. Dan starts pushing rope and says sorry twice. Yep. I like the way, you know, even superheroes have real-world problems. You know, like, I do think that's a cool gimmick. Did it need to be in the movie? A lot didn't need to be in the movie. Mm. I wish this was made now and it was made into like a Netflix TV series. Oh, that'd be awesome. It'd be so much better. You could give it time to fucking breathe. Why give him this trait of erectile dysfunction? Congrats on being the first superhero to have erectile dysfunction. (laughs) Is that on the back of your top trumps card? Does he not have something in his belt to help with this? (laughs) Here, I have my bat ring that I that helps me stay hard. <laughs> oh. In the comic, after that, he goes down to, you know, his, like, basement to his night owl gear. Yeah. And he's... Just starts lamping it out. <laughs> <laughs> Just smashing it up. <laughs> and he's looking at his um, costume and going, Oh, God, you know... Back in the day, I used to wear this and I was so powerful. But now, looking at it, it makes me feel impotent and so that's how they get it across in the comic does he actually say he says impotent he looks at the camera or the reader with a wink like (laughs) no that was just me being awesome Uh. (laughs) (laughs) Laurie's dying for some fun and to burn off all of this unspent energy so her and Dan suit up and save people from a burning building some dodgy CG later it's a success Thankfully, this time, he's able to get it up. Hooray! Or a hallelujah. How about that fucking child actor that they got? Mommy, is the man in the suit Jesus? Is this Rodney's kid? (laughs) (laughs) Rodney the Viper! Hey, Ma! (laughs) Is the bird guy? (laughs) Hey, Zeus! (laughs) (coughs) it's Nazareth or nothing man (laughs) oh my god Uh, clear headed they decide to go bust Rorschach out of prison Rorschach's in prison in general population, which includes 50 men he put there. One guy tries to shiv him at feeding time, but uh, shit, Rorschach incapacitates him, smashing the cafeteria glass and dumping a big vat of scalding hot oil over him. Horrific. Gruesome. Yeah. It's fortunate, though, that it wasn't, you know, the ones you see in the chipper that are just like a grate. Yeah. So you take it out and... It- you know, throw a fucking <laughs> chicken nugget out of them. 
warning the inmates, Rorschach utters one of the coolest lines in history. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I marked out when I heard this line. It's great. I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Awesome. Quoting CM Punk at Elimination Chamber 2010, of course. (laughs) (laughs) And be sure it's not me locked in here with you. It's you locked in here with me. Dwarf crime boss Big Figure seems unfazed about this and sets Humpty and Dumpty to break into his cell (laughs) during a prison riot. Oh my god. Massive mistake. Yeah, uh, who are these fucking numpties? Like, it's ridiculous. Humpty and Dumpty. (laughs) Collectively known as the (laughs) numpties. That's their last surname. (laughs) Their father hated them. (laughs) Humpty, Numpty and Dumpty. Dumpty. (laughs) So he sends up the first guy. Rorschach starts calling them fat or some of that in your man. He's fat! (laughs) He fire, <laughs> fire asses. Rorschach grabs his hands, breaks his thumbs, ties his arms to the bars, and the little midget guy is like, "Oh, I'm sorry, but you're in my way. You have to cut off his arms. Could you not use the angle grinder to cut whatever he has tied his arms with?" Uh, no, but possibly could have cut some other bars. Why didn't they just find the one fake bar? You know, oh yeah, but the process, process of elimination. Of elimination. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No! Ah, ah, that's painful. <laughs> One nothing. And then the second guy comes in, he's got the angle grinder, and Rorschach trips him up. Uh, he smashes his head into the toilet, water goes everywhere, and your man gets shocked to death. Awesome. It was really cool. And then the midget guy fucking pegs it, he's like, two to zero, or two nothing. Because I don't think the Americans say nil, do they? Two nil. Two nil. That, that's two a very... nil, two nil. <laughs> Oh, so what uh, What happens to Big Figure? He goes into the men's toilet. Uh, Rorschach goes in pursuit. We actually don't see this. Is no. This, uh, is this like the only kill off camera? Yeah, yeah. It's just left up to your imagination. It, it was disappointing though, because I thought with the swinging door, you'd have him standing oh. there. It swings... He's still alive, it swings again, and he's dead and blood everywhere. Blood everywhere, yeah. That'd be cool. Either either that or he walks in and Big Figure is in the, the one of the stalls, he opens it, waft. <laughs> <laughs> Rorschach, can you handle this? <laughs> Laurie, can you handle this? Man bad, can you handle this? I don't think you can handle this. <laughs> oh, brilliant, really. The Top Knots, the Samurai Deuce and Domino gang, are these jobber heel thugs that Dan and Laurie beat up for fun. They pick on comic book reading Bernard before being thrown a bone, murdering the old night owl, mistaking him for Dan. In a pub, whilst Rorschach breaks fingers for information... Just like my boy Jack Bauer did. Dan hears this news about old Nighthawk being dead, and Grief beats a present gang member almost to death before Rorschach pulls him off, saying, don't do this in front of the public. Dr. Manhattan is on Mars, and with no humans about, decides to spend the rest of the film nude. (laughs) Sadly, the director decides to not crop shots either, meaning we get multiple distracting shots of luminous blue dung. Why does he even need a dick? Yeah, you know I mean? he's beyond. He phallic. could just grow one when he needs it. <laughs> exactly, or tuck it between his legs. <laughs> like uh, like Buffalo a, Bill. Oh, I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me. <laughs> give, give him a nice fruit bowl from the back, yeah. <laughs> fruit but bowl? Why does he need, you know, the fucking chiseled abs and the. He the definitely bicep. has a fucking ego, doesn't he? Yeah. John brings Silk Spectre to Mars to have a chat. It's a bit. You know, she's already moved on to Man Bad at this stage, and so it's he's very kind of jealous lovery of him to show up and say, Let's have a chat where you tell me that you've been cheating on me. Yeah, what's this? I hate that gimmick. Uh, and obviously, so does she. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's part of the gimmick. He's becoming more separated from what it means to be a person, you know, and to have all these feelings like you humans. 
despite impending nuclear strikes as we get closer to midnight on the doomsday clock, Silk Spectre admits to sleeping with Dan and tries to get him to save the world anyway. So, oh my god, the fate of the world is in her hands. Thankfully, she's a superhero. Thankfully, she's got some kind of world-saving, compelling argument. What is it? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she throws a strop and walks off. Yeah. That's her argument. I don't want to. It's that rational, hormonal brain of hers. And he went out of his way to avoid her storming off in a strop. He brought her to Mars, for fuck's sake. There's nowhere to go. Inexplicably, Manhattan shows her the past and that the comedian was her father and that her mother willingly slept with him after the battery and attempted rape. Manhattan says, don't be blue, Peter. (laughs) (laughs) And does her work for her. He says, just her existing is a miracle. So, yeah, I'll save the world. <laughs> oh, the, why? Why is he only coming up with this now? Surely he should have known this always before he started the conversation. Yes, this is how the conversation Be- ends. Before he even met her, he should have known he was going to meet her and have this conversation. It makes no kayfabe sense to the character they've set up. But, but to Tarkian, Steve, <laughs> to Tarkian, it's a horrific argument. It's no argument. He no. makes. He convinces himself for her. Yeah. Which is bullshit. I just wrote, boo. <laughs> <laughs> that was weak. That was weak. Rorschach's journal. Final entry. Fights behind everything. Act 4. Preparing for death, Rorschach makes his final diary entry and drops it into someone's letterbox. Following the money trail leads our heroes to Ozzy's company. Dan guesses Adrian's password. It's on the book beside his computer. He has not the actions of the smartest man in the world. Yeah, so shit. Adrian, Ozymandias, he is actually the main heel. Should have known better. He's running a black Apple Mac. (laughs) (laughs) Rorschach and Night Owl go beyond the wall to Ozzy's evil lair, a pyramid set up in the snow. He's doing his best architect from the Matrix impression, watching lots of TVs. Yeah, yeah. Um, Night Owl and Rorschach are coming in to apprehend Ozymandias and he's got his back turned. Rorschach runs up to attack him. And of course, Ozymandias is ready for it. All of a sudden then, Night Owl decides to pull his gun. Why didn't Night Owl just walk in and shoot him in the back? Like a true superhero. (laughs) Shoot him in the back while he's not looking. (laughs) Heed the word of Pharaoh. Ozzy says he's not a comic book villain after explaining his dastardly plan. (laughs) Exposition dump. This is what chapter 11 is. 33 pages of plot. And I, I just got furious. Super heel here, Ozymandias. His outfit, despite having lots of Egyptian quirks, is intentionally modelled on Joel Schumacher's Batman costume. Black and white with the nipper. Oh my god. George Clooney Batman. So, you know the way catnip drives cats mad? Does batnip <laughs> drive cats <bats> mad? <laughs> Something awesome and so rare happens. His evil plan went ahead half an hour ago. A cataclysmic explosion in multiple American cities made to look like Dr. Manhattan did it. Ozymandias' plan is to kill millions to save billions. Unite USA and Russia against a common enemy, Dr. Manhattan. Not even John and his teleporting swinging dick can stop him. It's already happened. And fuck me. It works a treat. I really enjoyed the reasons for why he did what he did. They made a lot of sense. You can't dispute what he did. Yes, in his own head, absolutely. But um, I don't think it was evil, villainous in any way. I don't think he was a villain. I think he was just somebody that was... 
misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs> like, I get would, your way out of this one. Don't, now. don't put it. Don't put it. Don't, I don't want you to think that I condone his acts. Like, I wouldn't want to be in the middle of the big blue fucking orb when it goes off. Do you know? And the, it was a really good line. He killed millions to save billions. But in your from what you were saying, Steve, he he was gone. He was nuts. At I this point. I I fully believe that he was not rational and. By the time it got to the point where he had set his plan in motions, he was no longer the world's smartest man. He was just mental. Much like the pirate in the Black Freighter, he still believed he was doing right, but he was too far gone to see the error of his own way. Ozzy turns on the TV to show L. Tricky Dicky addressing the public, announcing that the USA are now allies with the Russians against Dr. Manhattan. Adrian has achieved world peace through mass genocide. So, in this case, he's justified, not even in his own head. In general, he's justified. So, we'll say at this point, it's almost guaranteed the world is going to end by nuclear war. He stops it. He saves the world. And it's the only way that it could be done. He's the smartest man in the world. Nobody could have done it in any other way. He did keep the world from ending, you know. Uh, He won, but was he right to do what he did anyway? What gives him the right to kill 15 million people? I think a true superhero and the actual smartest man on Earth would have found the way to not kill 15 million people and avert the nukes from happening. Yeah. Which would be a comic book trope to be able to get the ultra-happy A-plus mm. ending. Yeah. yeah. So, despite objections to the atrocity, they're all ultimately cool with the lie for the greater good, except for Rorschach, who will not compromise his morals and will let the world know. With seemingly no other choice, John vaporizes him, murdering him instantly, and everyone goes home. And the camera pans out. What's left of him is like a Rorschach plate. Mm, Awesome. In the aftermath, we see the plan was a success, as New York starts to rebuild with pro-USA and Russia integrated banners and shop signs. Peace has prevailed, built on a great lie. So the ending of the comic is slightly different. Yes, I wanted to ask about this, because this is like when they're saying this film is unfilmable, they always talk about the big purple albatross at the end of the film. Yeah. Or at the end of the comic. So there's a side plot throughout the comic where other comic book writers and artists and colorers have gone missing. And it turns out that Ozymandias has taken them. He's got them on some island in the middle of nowhere. He's got comic book writers? Uh, You know, like, there were more people there, you know, like, scientists, geneticists, like a bit of... So the world's most important people. Everything, you know? (laughs) And uh, he has a psychic person, and he uses all the power of money and science to build a giant alien, basically. Um, Genetically engineered one Yeah, yeah Uh, So this is a massive psychic space alien So he teleports the alien into New York City The teleportation kills it Because they haven't quite mastered that power like John has And when the alien dies It sends off a psychic blast Which is basically the nuke His goal is to fool the world leaders into thinking there is an alien threat and therefore they need to stop fighting each other, join up and get ready for the aliens coming. The movie did so much better using Dr. Manhattan. Jesus, that's so much better. Instead of some fucking squidbert fucking (laughs) what the fuck Dr. Manhattan according to the book is the only reason the world hasn't already ended via nuclear war but like why did like Dr. Manhattan never just go to the silos and turn the uranium into cheddar cheese he couldn't see oh sorry and before this whole plan yeah yeah. yeah. back in the 60s or the 50s or the you know but maybe Decades it's ago. because he didn't want to interfere interfere with humanity. He didn't ah, now want he's to have getting to... into the prime directive. That's yeah, yeah. A bit, yeah, well, that's a bit he didn't want to save the world. Maybe it wasn't. He said it's not my responsibility to save the well, world. Well, he does say the difference between a dead body and a live body means nothing to him because it has the same amount of particles. Mm. 
And sure, at the end, sure, he goes off to his home planet anyway, so... His <laughs> planet needed him! <laughs> Final scene. At the newspapers, fat bloke spills relish on his smiley face shirt, a fun nod to the Watchmen logo, and is told by the chief, since everyone's lovey-dovey, there's no news, so he can print anything he wants. As we close on a shot of Rorschach's journal, which contains the truth. Oh, <laughs> See you for the sequel. <laughs> hey, it's up to us to stop Ozzy <laughs> Hey, it's up to us to take out Umbrella. Welcome to the aftermath. Ook, what did you make of Watchmen? I give it a six, which on my scale means pretty good. So we initially watched this over eight years ago. We gave out shit about it at the time for two reasons. One, expectations were sky high. And two, the penis. Did we give out about anything besides the penis? The length. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've probably seen it three times since then because I was thinking, no, this movie has to be good. It really, I mean, it's got all the elements there. It's got a great plot. Mostly great characters. A lot of great visuals. It's a gorgeous movie. Yeah. And some very good action. Probably a little light on on great action. However, it's extremely long and boring in parts. It can be quite frustrating at times. You just want something to happen. And I'm not a huge fan of action in general, but something to keep the movie taken over is replaced by long, boring, self-indulgent monologues about the state of the world. Self-indulgent, I think, is a good term to use when you're talking about this movie yeah so i'd say i mean probably most of of our fans have watched this already but if you haven't i would give it a mild recommendation Hmm. yeah quite similar in how i've changed uh, about this movie so when we watched it in niles didn't like it the movie is long and for long stretches of the long movie it's boring and it's very talky the action is sparse And when the action does happen, it's quite hit and miss. But yeah, the plot of the movie is fantastic. And I would recommend the movie. Even if you don't like it, I think it's still worth seeing because I think it's a good piece of art. I definitely like it more uh, than I did the first time. But since then, I've also read the comic. And that kind of really fleshes out the world. And I think without having read it, I don't know if the movie would have gone up in my opinion. But yeah, I, I'd absolutely recommend. I think if I was to score it out of 10, I'd give it in the sixes, maybe even a 6.5, uh, because I do think the movie's beautiful. I think it's gorgeous looking. Worth a watch. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Very odd, because we're kind of on the same page here. Oh. I really enjoyed this, actually. Uh, way more than I did last time. Uh, watched it in two sittings over two nights. I watched the three hours 35 version. No way I could have done that in one. You'd be knackered and you'd be dying for it to end, which we were dying for it to end with the two hours 35. Um, beautifully shot, expensive looking, clearly reverential to the source material. Angles were meticulously recreated from comic panels and it's awesome. The soundtrack is fantastic, very 70s expensive licensed songs like The Sound of Silence, Ride of the Valkyries, um, but it's also quite generic. Many films use like Jimi Hendrix's All Along the Watchtower with Nail and I, Rush, Land of the Lost, Private Parts, Forrest Gump, Clockers, A Bronx Tale, Blue Chips, Vegas Vacation, Two Back Resurrection, The Simpsons and Watchmen. And it's the payoff, it's the very final thing in Battlestar Galactica. So using all of these well-known tracks, it's more of, now that's what I call music, volume two. Yeah, Uh, yeah, it's kind of true, actually. Apart from Philip Glass, you probably wouldn't associate any of it with Watchmen. Yeah. I'm very down with the grittiness, the superheroes in general, and the highly stylized comic book aesthetic. Besides the ridiculous runtime, I have two massive problems. Blue Dong. Yeah, we covered it already, but... Unlike Dr. Manhattan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's unnecessary and there's no creative merit. Like, it doesn't matter if it breaks kayfabe to have jocks on. People will appreciate it. 
just incredible Hulk it, you know? Nobody gives out about the magical elasticity and tensile strength of Bruce Banner's jocks that, they're, that they fit him perfectly as normal human and a hundred times the size of the Hulk. And then grow back when he changes back? Exactly. No one wants to see a big hairy green doll. 80s elastic <laughs> waistbands, Jay. <laughs> No one wants to see John's Blue Butcher Shop either. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> and the other thing is, how do you face turn a child killing, woman battering rapist? You don't. You don't book it in the first place. He's already committed war atrocities. That's enough for him to be healed. You know, you don't need the rest of it. Oh, the other thing is that they had the victim go, yeah, well, you actually end up going back and sleeping with him. And she's like, oh, but just the once. But I was like, you just justified rape there, mate. Yeah. And the moral of the story about it is, so she did want it. You know, I was like, oh, fuck off. Like, that's like, horrible. And you're like, at the end, she kisses the, the picture of the Minutemen and she kisses Eddie. Maybe. So it, she did love him. Yeah, yeah. It's very strange. It's a very bad message, you know? Yeah. Um. Overall, like, I knew when we watched this film together and then OSW started, one day, <laughs> <laughs> spent ages editing his dick. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, I'd actually rate it probably higher than you guys, probably maybe a 7.5, you know? If you were able to fix those problems, I'd actually rate it even higher. You know? Yeah, yeah. You know? Overall, a very good film, but get your dick out of my face. <laughs> Because, man, I love Roger. He's so awesome. And not just the badass voice and uber cool inkblot mask, but he's the unwavering righteous superhero. He's the best of them, doggedly pursuing the truth when nobody else cared to look. Heavy-handed, yes, but he only punishes the guilty and is the only one unquestionably willing to die for the truth rather than living with a terrible lie. Hmm. He's the hero this city needs. But it's awesome because Rorschach himself thinks that Dan is what you just said because Dan doesn't go too far and doesn't kill people and he keeps within the lines, you know? Yeah, it's fucking depth to, to, to watch, man. There really is. Ah, it's too bad Rorschach's dead. Or is he? Oh my god! <laughs> In 2016, DC announced a 12-part comic book rebirth and continuation of Watchmen in Doomsday Clock as Watchmen mix with the DC universe. Hmm. Bringing back Rorschach and hopefully featuring Superman punching Dr. Manhattan. Hmm. Dr. Manhattan would destroy Superman. He wouldn't be able to touch him. Or what if I take off my pants? Oh my god! <laughs> He has like a green dog. <laughs> and then they fight. He can turn his dick into kryptonite. <laughs> uh, with the release date of November 22nd, 2017. It's set in 1992, so seven years after Watchmen, and it deals with the great lie being uncovered. Oh, okay. Mm. And they've also brought out prequel comics uh, before Watchmen. Uh, any good? Have you heard anything? I about? have them downloaded. I mean, I bought them. <laughs> and I will be reading them soon. Excellent. So that does it for this week, folks. The Watchman Review is on the books. In the pocket. How to say. Next up is our Bound for Glory TNGF Impact Wrestling Bound for <laughs> Glory <laughs> 2017 and thank you so much to Chris from Reload Last Save Adam McCodum Ryan Probe Bear and other great artists (laughs) (laughs) for their contributions remember that you can watch all of our episodes fuck free of charge and in IMAX play with 43 full screen at oswreview.com awesome if you want to watch a couple of exclusive film reveals and tops <laughs> you can uh, by this point and enroll at NuggerU at NuggerU.OSWReview.com and you can follow and subscribe to Steve on Twitch Twitch.tv slash OSWReview and what are you playing on Twitch this month Steve? Many great horror games <laughs> <laughs> Other oh, great horror games <laughs> uh, No, I'm going to be playing FIFA because I'm getting ready for the big showdown with uh, Mr. OOC Yep. I'm going to be playing Super Mario Odyssey and some South Park Fractured Butthole. <laughs> I love that. It's I it's really juvenile, but it's so funny. And I de- laugh every time. And Destiny 2 on PC. 
because you got to get them frames. What uh, resolution are you using? Four P. Four <laughs> K resolution. Although I stream in ten eighty p. Ah, and frames per second? It's infinite. It's as much as your comp can handle. Yeah. And can you see past sixty? I mean, like, I don't think you can discern the difference, but you know it's there. <laughs> Do you put, like, the frames counter in the comp no! order? No! Oh, my that God, you dropped to 120. Smelly knob ends. <laughs> and if any of our fans do that, you're a smelly knob end. <laughs> and if you're John from Watchmen, you're a smelly knob <laughs> <laughs> So, it's a goodbye from Ozzy. Here do. We will. Take a boo. And myself, Jay Hunter. And remember, a winner is you. Awesome stuff, that. That was, that was Whopper. That, that was a really good one.